Welcome back to Municipal Month on the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am pleased and honored to have our guest on to the show today. She is a first term counselor for the city of Lethbridge. Counselor Jen Schmidt Rempel. Counselor Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So, counselor, and I know you said I could call you Jen during this, but I'm going to get counselor out of the way a few times before we get to the informalities. But, counselor, I've started my interviews off the same way with every politician or candidate to be politician the same way, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Um, I mean, I've, I've always been very passionate about our community. Um, worked hard for our community. We used to own a Lethbridge Living magazine, which was a magazine, lifestyle magazine, that talked about all of the great things that go on in Lethbridge um, and, and the surrounding area. So I think it really came out of working with all the different community groups, the different individuals, everything like that, that we got to interview, that we got to work with, that we got to promote down here in Lethbridge. And certainly bringing Lethbridge's voice to the province, um, to the rest of Canada, because I represented, as part of that magazine, I represented Lethbridge provincially and nationally um, as, as a magazine publisher. It was certainly that probably kick-started the whole sense of wanting to make sure that Lethbridge had a voice at the various levels of government. Um, so I worked on that. I've also served on a number of different boards throughout the city of Lethbridge. I've been actively involved in the community um, the whole time we've lived here. So I have a really good sense of community, of our community, what people are looking for, um, how people feel about how the local government was working. Uh, so, you know, it just sort of naturally evolved um, and it came to a point where sooner or later I was going to be serving on council. <laughs> did you always know you know, it's the natural evolution did you always know that council was going to be the option for you because you could have chosen provincial you could have school uh, chosen school board you could have chosen federal mp but you chose council in 2021 was municipal yep. politics where you thought you could have made the biggest impact in your community yeah absolutely so um i'd actually uh I'd actually planned on running in uh, 2017, but my dad got quite ill and passed away. So that was right around the time we would have been launching the campaign. Um, and I just, I was not prepared to do it then, but I was gearing up to a municipal election campaign at that point. Um, 2015 was where we really started looking at to where I would fit in politics. And uh, one of my mentors um, sat me down and over, over some tequila and said, are you gonna run municipally or provincially? You will hate provincial politics. Um, and that largely is because I could never tow a party line. So I am what I call politically agnostic. Um, and it boils down to, I think, and you know, others, others don't like to hear this and will disagree with me, but I firmly believe that our provincial and federal parties have outlived their usefulness I hear from people that they are voting for the best of a bad lot when it comes to municipal and federal elections um, because the parties don't actually represent what people really truly believe anymore. So when we sat down and had that very frank conversation, it really came down to, you know what, municipal is where I want to be because she was right there was no way I would ever be able to tow a party line if I didn't agree with it or my ethics didn't line up with party leader. First off, um, thank you for explaining my entire life of political agnosticism. So it, thank it, it's politically agnostic. They will live their usefulness for me. I, I just, I, I, I'm finding so much uh, wealth of knowledge when I'm talking to municipal councillors. And I, I would say you probably have just described every municipal councillor <laughs> that has come on this show. I win. Mean, <laughs> there you go. Um, I win. Mean. I, I want to talk about that. Uh, the last year's election, 2021. So in 2021, yes. you decided, okay, 2017 wasn't for me because uh, your uh, father yeah. health issues, but 2021, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in. I want to I want to go back to election night because we are coming up to the one year anniversary of that election night. So yes, Tuesday. 
to exactly balance Tuesday. Are- we've got drinks planned already for tuesday night <laughs> we were just talking about it last night my some of my team and i went out last night and they're like are we going drinking on tuesday night i mean this is, sounds terrible it sounds like all i do is drink um but, wait uh, so wait wait I'm- hold on a second so october 18th is yep. the one year anniversary so this episode is actually airing one year from the time you were elected. So okay. this this is sort of serendipitous of this question now. I want to go back to that election. And yeah. the ballots are cast, the results are coming in, and it's officially declared you are city councillor-elect Jen Schmidt-Rempel. What is going through your head last year at this time? Holy shit, what have I done? <laughs> um, you know, it was it was funny because you know I've watched I've watched some of your episodes of this now and uh, made me think back on that night and we were talking about it last night. Um, I was dead set against having anybody over that evening. Um, because the team is like, we're getting together, and I'm like, no, we're not. I'm going to sit at home alone in front of my computer. Um, and even my husband is like no, we're having people over. And I'm like, no, no, we're not. So throughout the day, it was kind of funny. Um, our, my, my web designer stopped by, he brought me coffee and everybody just spent the day coming in to talk me down <laughs> throughout the day. Um, so that night, actually, people came over whether I wanted them to or not, which, which was fantastic. And I appreciated that support. I had a very strong team. I had a great support network um, and, and they were fantastic. And I did appreciate having them there. As those um, as those votes started coming in, and it was becoming clearer that I was sitting at the third place position, it really was deeply humbling to know that people in this city um, trusted me with with leading. Right? It was deeply humbling. It it was yeah. It was awe inspiring. That, that people voted for me and especially um, getting onto council as a first time candidate, right? That they felt that trust in me, that they felt that belief in me um, to have that high of a voter turnout for myself. It, it was a deeply humbling experience. It was a holy crap, what am I gonna do now experience? Um, but it was deeply humbling. Well, and it's still is, uh, and it's a huge honor to be here representing the people who voted for him. Well, representing everybody in this. You mentioned something quite interesting because you've listened to the show before, so you know the ultimate uh, follow-up question. Because that oh shit moment that you had of okay, I'm now the official councillor elect, now goes into the weight and responsibility of the decisions that you make around that council table will not only impact you, your friends, mm-hmm. your family, but your community that has just elected you. How has that been for the first year in office? Is there moments when it is heavier than others or are you still at a place where you're like, okay, the decisions I'm gonna be making, no matter how small I may think it is, it's going to impact someone at a local level. Right. So, you know, I think, and, and you've got a journalism experience, and I think that really helped me with this position. Um, when you're putting this podcast together, it's not about you. It's about the audience, right? It's about the people. So when we had the magazine and I was putting that together, I recognized it was never about me. It was about what the audience wanted, what the people in, in the community wanted. And that I have carried into this position. When I was campaigning, when I do this, this job is not at all about me. It is about what I hear out in the community. It's about what I hear people want, people, people with louder voices, people who barely speak. It's about finding that balance and it's about what they want. So certainly that does weigh on me, but it's also always recognizing this is about the community. This is about what's best for the community. What do I need to do to achieve that? And always, always looking at the community, not, not what, I, what I'm interested in. It's what the community wants and keeping that in mind all the time. So how do you balance that? Because you, ha- you are elected to lead and you're not elected to bring 
a thousand different opinions to council and try to sort that out. You're elected to make the final decision. And you're going to upset some people over some people mm -hmm. if you vote one way or the other. So in your first year in office, how has that been? Because I can imagine as someone, like you said, who wants to look out for the best of the community, you have to take in all sides. And sometimes mm -hmm. all sides don't agree on every single issue. So how does that work in your mind? Well, and for me, um, when I ran, I ran quite frankly too, telling people I'm not running to make friends. You're <laughs> not going to like it. I'm, I'm, I, and I'm, quite fine with people not liking my decisions. I am always going to be on the lookout for what is best for our community. There have been a couple of council meetings where people have walked out of during my comments because they don't like what I have to say. That's fine with me. I feel very secure in the fact that the decisions I am making and the way I am voting are what's best for our community and our community as a whole. And not everybody will be happy with those and that's okay. We're going to be talking about the community here in a few minutes, but I want to continue on yourself here for a few seconds. And I want to talk about personal and private life because your public persona of a counselor is you are on 24 seven. When you go out to the grocery shop, go grocery shopping or go fill up the tank or go pick up the post. You aren't there as just Jen Schmidt Rempel. You're there as counselor and mm -hmm. people will come up to you if you're out at a restaurant, probably. I'm not sure. They may have done it in the past so far or they may not. But how do you balance that work life responsibility? Because you seem like someone who wants to be engaged with your community. You, you seem like someone who wants to do the best for their community. But you, we also have to realize that politicians have a breaking point and they need that downtime as well. So how do you balance that? Um, I mean, I am definitely out in the community a lot, and you'll see me on social media a lot. Um, we joke around that Jen gets around, right, because I am out there and that's what I do. I get around. Um, so, you know, and that's come from owning the magazine, all the different boards and committees that I've served on and just being out there. So I do very much understand that. Um, I do take time almost every day. Um, I walk about five to eight kilometers every day. Um, we live very close to a lake and I get out there just about every afternoon. Um, a lot of the people around there know me and they know when I've got my headphones on, it's a wave and nobody bothers me. And they will talk to me other places, but they also know that when I am going and I'm rage walking around the lake, <laughs> um, it's a Jen, Jen's burning off some steam here, just let her go. But do you know what I mean? I do very much make sure that I get out to do that. Um, and, and yeah, keeping physically active is really one of the biggest things I do to make sure I'm sort of balancing that out. And it helps you think more clearly when you do step away from the phone, when you step away from the TV, you step away from the computer, um, you step away from the paper and just go and spend some time with your headphones on, just not engaging. And that helps out a lot. Do you engage? Do you engage with the hate? Because you talked about the people who walked out during council meetings after you're speaking. And I know I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm, I'm glad you brought up that moment. Do you want to know why they walked out or do you at the end of the day care in some sense? I know they were, well, they walked out because they didn't like what I had to say because they were bullying us on social media and I pointed it out. And um, do you pay attention to the social somebody, media attacks. Pardon? Do you pay attention to the social media attacks? As a local councillor, you are the front line of politics. And we, we hear about the federal politicians getting attacked. We hear about provincial politicians getting attacked. But municipally, we don't often hear about it because it's usually on a social media board of a board of a board. But do you pay attention to what people say on social media? Um, I will take a look at it. My background's communications. It's hard for me not to always be looking at that, reading it, you know, um, yeah, taking a look at it, paying attention to it. I certainly do read that. Um, you know, I got I got beat up a fair bit during uh, during the campaign, um, and I've got a background in communications. I know when you don't engage with trolls, right? I the biggest way to lose a social media argument is jump in on a social media argument or answer somebody who's trying to start a social media argument, right? So I will read it. I'll take a look at it. I'll take it for what it is. Some things I will respond to um, largely, and I will correct people. 
If they're wrong, I will correct them um, because that's just fighting the misinformation that gets out there. Um, but, you know, some people are just trolls and trying to engage and, and trying to get you to react. And on those ones, it's like, nope, I, I will read what you've had to say. I'm not interested. Some use it as a bullying tactic to make us change our minds or to try to influence us or I'm, I'm going to push this or push you this way. Um, I've had some people say to me, I can tag you in whatever I want because you're a municipal counselor now. It's like, well, you can tag me in whatever you want. doesn't mean I'm going to listen to you. Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it really is. Certainly, I look at it. I don't always engage. Um, I mean, I have to have a good couple of cans of Red Bull and really be in an argumentative mood and have some time on my hands before I'll start doing that. Um, but yeah, it really is. Like I said, is your way to lose a social media argument is to answer a question. Is your community engaged? We, you and I, 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 I say this uh, just knowing you for less than 20 minutes now. Um, <laughs> You and I, we're, we're political geeks. We, we seem to follow politics a little bit as the communications. You, you know about politics. You know about the different levels of uh, governments. Is your community engaged in municipal politics? Because I, I know Lethbridge. I've been there a few times. And I can tell you that people know who their MLA is and they, or MLAs are. And they know who their MP is. But are they engaged on a municipal level? Not as much as I would like to see them engaged. Um, you, you know, that? certainly... Uh, well, I mean, you can look at your social media and you can see who the frequent flyers are and who is engaged, right? Um, I used to be at a point when we had the magazine where I could tell somebody on social media when they were anonymously posting and I knew exactly who they were in the Roast and Toast and the Lethbridge Herald, just based on their language, right? Um, so you can, we have some very frequent, and I call them frequent flyers, and I'm not trying to be derogatory with that term. I just know who they are because I see them frequently, right? Um, so we have a certain number of people who are highly engaged. You can see them regularly across the board. Um, but we have a lot of people who are, we also have a lot of people who are engaged, but very silent. And those are the ones you're going to meet while you're out at the restaurant, you're at the bar, um, you're grocery shopping, the ones that are going to come up and talk to you. Um, and those, those voices are important to listen to as well. But that is still not a majority of our community. Um, you know, we look at, look at our municipal election rates, look at our provincial election rates. We're, we're still seeing less than 50% people coming out to federal, less than 50% people are engaged in coming out to vote, right? To me, that is still a problem because less than 50% of people uh, elected us to council, right? I'm thrilled to be here, absolutely. But I would really like to see more, in, more engagement and informed engagement. Right. Like really people finding those issues that they're interested in, um, stepping up to learn more and and talk more and interact with us even more in the community. Well, hello, this is your friendly host of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I have some big news for you. I am pleased to announce that our show has partnered with Strategic Steps Incorporated to launch a brand new show on October 19th. The Political Trenches, Local Government at Work is a new show with a focus on local governments. Each episode, we will discuss the biggest stories from local governments and we will have a round roundtable discussion on issues facing local governments today. Follow the news show by searching The Political Trenches on all social media platforms. We are looking forward to discussing local governments and heading into the political trenches. I am just cautious of time here and I want to turn to our second segment and that is your community, the city of Lethbridge. Yep. And before I start this, I'm going to preface this statement, this question, because we have had the people who have sent us anonymous messages. This is a conversation between the councillor and I. This is not a motion at council. This is not a direction of council. This is the councillor and I having a conversation about her opinion on what is facing the city of Lethbridge. So, councillor, Jen, mm -hmm. what is the biggest issue, in your opinion, that is facing the city of Lethbridge today? I mean, there are a few, in my opinion. So um, let's talk so, about them. Let's, okay, um, so certainly our social issues, right? 
Um, and I think that is, that's worldwide. The social issues, um, we're seeing worldwide issues around, and I, I, don't, I don't like the word issues or the word challenges because we're talking about real human people here. They're not an issue. They are not a challenge. They have needs that need to be met. When I ran for council, uh, people was the first pillar of, of my campaign. And the very first statement in that was finding a space for everybody in our community to belong. And I firmly believe in that. But like other major cities, Lethbridge is, is challenged with helping all of our populations, our vulnerable populations, our senior populations, our new, our new Canadian populations. Um, you know, we need those social services and we need to be lobbying heavy with the provincial and federal government to be helping us with those social services and with those needs for people within our community. Right, and that includes um, areas of our, our social housing, so our homelessness, um, our transitional housing, our, our assistance with uh, mental health and addictions, um, but it's also larger than that too when you look at mental health um, challenges for people coming from different countries um, and, and becoming part of Canadian culture and society, helping people understand um, helping people understand and helping us understand how we need to work with people too, coming from different communities. I was watching a news broadcast last night um, out of Calgary where they're having trouble housing Afghan refugees as opposed to Ukrainian um, newcomers to Canada. And because Af Afghan refugees have larger families, right? Um, and it's, it's bringing that understanding to Canadians that we need to help everybody and find a place for everybody within our communities. So. It's, it's a big umbrella, but um, certainly social issues is a large component of that. And that's probably the biggest challenge I see we're facing right now. Other ones I look at are um, the issue of doctor recruitment. So making sure we're getting doctors here down in Lethbridge um, and building that capacity for not only Lethbridge, but for our region and Southern Alberta. Um, EMS dispatch, I mean, that's another, another large one we're working on. Um, and want to make sure we're working on. And then uh, our water and wastewater infrastructure. That's something that's going to have a regional impact. So I mean, it's not, it's not just one large thing. It's, it's a series of different things that we really need to be paying attention to and working on. First off, you are not the first councillor slash mayor to bring these issues up, as you can imagine, especially yeah. EMS and healthcare. But I want to yeah. start with the social issues, particularly housing. Because this is mm -hmm. an issue that I've heard many times through the last, the second half of this series that I've put, put together. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing as city councillor? Because I know the first step is always the hardest step to take when trying mm -hmm. to figure out a solution to help people. So what have you done in your year that you've been on council? And I know you are one vote and you are one person on a, a council, but you can start the conversation. So how have you started the conversation about trying to address this in your first term? So some of the work that I've done, um, I've engaged with people with lived experiences. So we are, when I go grab my lunch every day, we're not too far from the mall. I have a really nice walk over to the mall and I stop outside in Gulf Gardens and I do speak with people, um, finding out how things are going, what they need. Um, I've had an opportunity to visit the encampment that's just north of City Hall here. Um, you know, I have a lot of people saying you need to talk to people with lived experiences and I do, I do that. I just don't share that on social media. Um, but I do get out there to do that and chat with them, find out what's going on, um, what, what their needs are, what their fears are, and where the gaps in our current services are. Uh, one of the other first things I did was I, I, uh, I'm not afraid of confrontation and asking questions. And one of the first things I did was start asking why some of our social service agencies weren't as available and open as they should be. There was one that actually had, one that was supposed to be helping people get into housing, um, actually had their doors locked. And it, 
it was a matter of walking a few people down there saying their doors are locked. Why are we funding this organization? They are not helping people. And learning from people with lived experiences as well as other groups that work with those people, learning that some of those social services organizations aren't fulfilling what they should be doing. They weren't getting out. They weren't connecting people to services. So I certainly started pushing that and I will continue to push that. Actually, I'll be pushing that probably this afternoon during our uh, standing policy committee meeting because I've got a series of questions on that. Um, the other thing I did, which I did get some blowback on, was I voted in favor of uh, council to approve $230,000 spend on um, the encampments. Large, it was, it was a way for community groups and part of that $230,000 spend meant that community groups went out to the encampments. They went out and they spoke to people. They weren't doing that before. This enabled that to happen. Um, and we learned from the reports back on those that people were getting reconnected or connected to services. And to me, that was, that is invaluable. 230,000 is so little to spend to make sure we're getting people connected and reconnected to services, right? Um, and that was also making sure people were safe um, and, and just getting a handle on where the gaps, that kind of stuff was. So those are some of the things I initially started out with. I uh, also put forward a motion earlier this year for uh, one of our spaces to be examined as an interim sober shelter so that people who were seeking uh, recovery could have an opportunity to go there. It was something that we could do immediately. Right now, examine that space, see what we could get through on that. Uh, we just wrapped up those engagement sessions and I attended both of those engagement sessions to hear from different people. Um, you, you, different you talk about, people sorry, you talk about engagement no. and you talk about communications and talking to people. You were the mm -hmm. first counselor, and I am not saying that none of the other counselors that I've spoken to have said the exact same thing as you, but how much should a municipal counselor and a municipality look at things through that perspective? We can't just make a decision that we think is right. We need to go out and talk to people who are going yep. to be affected. Yeah, absolutely. That is that that needs to be a priority. We should always be out there talking to people, learning from people. Um, just on aside from social issues, uh, we're looking at an area redevelopment plan in our warehouse district. Yesterday, our city staff were doing tours of the warehouse district. So I signed up for those because I can read all about the area redevelopment plan on paper. Certainly, I have that information available to me. But like I told one of the staff members who said, you know, it's great you come out to these. Well, I'm going to be out there walking it anyway. I might as well come on your tour because I can't just sit in the office and go, oh, OK, this is it. No, I need to go out there and actually look at the space so I can envision what I'm seeing and talk to um, the people on that tour, too. Right. To find out, well, what do you think of this area redevelopment plan? How are you looking at it? But then I also get to hear and got to hear from city staff about what they're envisioning and what they were finding out from the community. Right. So we should I try to attend as many of the engagement sessions as I possibly can. Um, we did our budget, uh, our two cents engagement um, over over uh, where we had a number of different events set up where people could come and tell us what they thought about how we should spend the budget. Um, myself and another counselor attended all of those just to be out there talking to people and finding out you know, you suck, don't spend my money that way. Okay, how would you like me to spend your money? Get online and tell me this, or you shouldn't spend money on this. Okay, tell me more about that. Like, help me understand why you believe that. And then let's hear from this person over here who's just joined the conversation now who disagrees with you. So now we're having some good dialogue and discourse and people are, people are starting to talk to each other when you get out to do that. Thank God people are starting to talk to each other. I just we need <laughs> it's to. about time, right? Exactly. Yeah. I wanted to, I want to turn to the other topics that you talked about, and they are doctor recruitment, EMS dispatch, and water wastewater treatment. I want to start with the healthcare issues. Now you know and I know that this is a provincial issue, but yes. a resident of your community does not care two iotas that that is a provincial issue they elected you to deal with this issue even if it is a provincial heck even if it's a federal issue 
they want you to fix it. How have yeah. you been able to adapt to that new uh, lifestyle? Because issues that come to you from your residents are not just going to be municipal issues. They're going to be a range of issues and they don't want to be past the buck. They don't want to be told, go contact this person. They want you to do the work. How do you do that? Right. And how do you do that when it comes to healthcare? Because healthcare is an issue that a lot of municipalities are facing right now. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure our staff get tired of me saying, let me help out with that. Um, <laughs> what, what can I do? Um, sign me up. I'll be there. So, I mean, specifically for doctor recruitment, um, we, we talked, uh, worked with staff and staff put together a plan. Um, and we have some actual doctor recruitment videos that have been put together um, by um, the city of Lethbridge staff, but also working with economic development Lethbridge. So we've, We've worked successfully on that to market to potential doctors. We've worked with our Shina Primary Care Network. Um, so while it's a provincial challenge, um, we sort of thought, okay, and like you said, residents don't care if it's provincial or federal. So we started wading in on some of that and we started creating our own doctor recruitment kind of plans, um, which is nice. And we've had some really good engagement um, and we're hoping to convert more physicians to choose Lethbridge as their home. Uh, right now, we've got confirmation from the province that 17 doctors will be coming to Lethbridge uh, by the end of March, 2023. So we've seen some good uptake there and we will continue to push that. Um, I, ideally, I would love to see if we could get a teaching college down here. So if, you know, or, or some kind of partnership with uh, University of Calgary, University of Alberta, um, University of Lethbridge might be saying, Jen, shut up. Um, we're not ready to go there yet. Uh, they might be ready to go there. That's, that's a different issue. And maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but I would love to see if we could get those three post-secondaries to work together um, and see what we can get down here for a teaching college in conjunction with the University of Lethbridge. Um. Okay, <laughs> I want to ask the yeah, question. Yeah, and I, like I said, I'm pretty sure staff and, and even people in the community get tired of hearing, Jen, shut up, we're not ready then. <laughs> no, but I But would... really, the, let's, let's try. Like, let's start talking. Let's, you know, we've got to work together, regionally and as a province. The hardest part of any journey is the first step. So you have to start exactly. saying stuff. Uh, I wanna, exactly. I want to turn uh, go back to doctor recruitment here for a second because this is not an issue that is specific to Lethbridge. Every municipality is dealing with mm -hmm. this. How do you promote yourself? How do you promote the city of Lethbridge as that place that doctors need to come? You talked about the economic development. You talked about staff working on those videos, but every community is doing that. Every community yeah. is going through this same issue. So is there things that you have done or is there things that, that you want this, or I shouldn't say you want the city to do, but is there things that the council is looking at like incentives? Hey, come live with, come work here for five years. We'll pay for your first year of rent for free or whatever to try to attract that a little bit more. Or are these still in uh, baby phases of discussions behind the scenes? Some of those are, um, the incentives are definitely something we've considered and those are in our back pocket. Right now, what we're hoping to do is focus on the amazing things that Lethbridge has going on, right? Um, so largely looking at the low cost of housing, um, we've got some of the, the most affordable housing in the province, um, in Canada. So we're great that way. We've got some of the best green spaces. We're close to a number of recreational uh, areas. Plus we've got a lot of recreational activities going on right here in the city. We focus on that. Um, and we focus largely on the livability of our community. The other thing is, is we also talk to doctors, especially new grads to learn what they were looking for. And uh, this is something we still need to work a little bit more on, but we learn from new grads that they don't want to run a business. So what can we do to talk to them about not running the business component of that? Just coming here, being doctors. So that's something that's, that we're working on. And um, yeah, something we're working on and something we're looking a little bit more at is exactly what they want as far as not having to run a business, but just doing the medicine. 
So I wanted to I want to turn to EMS now because tomorrow's episode, so Wednesday's Wednesday's episode of at, right after this episode airs, Wednesday's episode, I'm sitting down with your relatively close neighbor, Coldale Mayor Jack Van Ryan. Okay. And he talked about the exact same thing. He said EMS dispatch, EMS is a big issue in our area. And I said, okay, I thought it was an interesting experience, but hearing two people talk about it back to back is quite a eye-opening experience. The provincial government is EMS. They are AHS. They are the ones that are going to be dealing with this. Um, this is an issue that a lot of people are facing, particularly over the last three years that we've had with COVID-19 and mental health and PTSD mm-hmm. and just worn out EMS workers. How yeah. do we fix it? How do we fix it on a municipal level? What are you looking at to see a potential silver lining to start this fix? So, I mean, really what it is, is finding a way we're going to have to work with the provincial government to to fix that EMS system. Um, It's something we're only just starting to look at how we're going to negotiate it. I think we will need to be negotiating it um, as a region. That is something we really need to be working with Lethbridge too. So talking with all of our close neighbors to talk about um, EMS dispatch and how it works. We know that it's a significant problem. We know that the dispatchers don't know where things are in Lethbridge. They don't know what range road 21 is, Um, you know, like that kind of thing. Uh, So it really does boil down to we need to, and we're we're in the initial stages, we're working on it. We need to sit down too with our regional neighbors to put together some kind of regional plan and figure out how we want to work with the government on this. I mean, you'll recall the EMS dispatch idea has been floated for decades now because that was something that AHS was trying to pass under, I believe, Alison Redford's government to start with. They tried to pass it under Rachel Notley's government um, and governments were all saying, no, it's a bad idea. I think we're seeing, sure, let's give it a shot, but we're seeing it is a bad idea now in practice. It's not working Um, and, and people aren't getting the service they need. And we know too, you know, from EMS that they're being taken out of our area. They're not serving our population. So how many times we go into Code Red, it astounds me. Even when we ran the magazine, we did a series on emergency services. And how many times 10 years ago we were going into Code Red was was startling. Uh, We need to be working on it. We need to, like I said, probably be working on it as part of a region. And, and start really pushing the government to to fix the system that is, I think we can obvious, I think we can say it's obviously broken province wide. Um, That's my opinion. Uh, <laughs> no, exactly. And this, remember everyone, this is the opinion of the councillor. This is not a direction or a motion at council. Um, I want I want to turn to the issues as a whole now, because you've mentioned social issues, doctor recruitment, EMS, wastewater, water. And I, I would love to talk about wastewater and water treatment, but just cost us time. Now, if I go to Lethbridge tomorrow and I go ask 100 people in your community, they will have 100 different issues that they believe are the most important in their community. How yeah. do you balance that? Because you are there to be their elected representatives and advocate for their issues that they have. But everyone's going to have a different of opinion, difference of opinions Mm -hmm. on what the biggest issue is going to be. So as a city councillor, because you are one vote on council, how do you balance what you bring forward to council with what your constituents want? Because everyone's going to have a different opinion on big issues or their issue that they think is the most important right now. Um, So our strategic planning session helped with some of that because we have a very clear direction as to where we want to head as a council. So we can measure a lot of those issues against that strategic plan. I can also measure a lot of those issues against the campaign that I ran and the pillars that I ran under, right? So for me, it really is bringing in those issues, measuring them against our strategic plan, measuring them against what I ran on and making those decisions making my decisions based on those because we know that those are the things that the community values. The strategic plan was all of us working together and coming up with a consensus of these are the things we need to focus on because this is what we heard while we were campaigning. 
And certainly I can look at my campaign and go, I know that people voted for me because I ran on these things. So I can bring those two things together and marry them, and it helps me make decisions on that. Now, also just getting out into the community and talking to people about different issues that have come up, what they're seeing in the community, um, what people have seen throughout the summer, what people are actually experiencing um, in our city. I can I can take those and and incorporate that into that. Also understanding that people want us to be forward thinking and looking at what we want Lethbridge to be in the upcoming years, right? So when we're talking about another uh, river crossing, when we're talking about the airport, when we're talking about being a transportation hub, when we're talking about being um, a hub for technology, what are those things that we need to be doing now that are gonna benefit us 15, 20, 25 years in the future? So it really is taking all of those things and putting them together and then um, really measuring them against that strategic plan as well as what I ran on. And that helps me make those decisions. I feel like I should have asked this to a lot of other councillors and mayors who've come on, but I'm going to ask it to you and why not just start the ball rolling here. You've been on council for one year now. Is there, yeah. is there an issue? Is there a priority that you got approached by a resident that you said, Whoa, I didn't expect this to be of a topic that I would ever be discussing as a municipal councillor, but here we are in 2022 or 2021 when it was approached and I'm discuss I, I have to find a solution for it. Um, not really. I'm very rarely surprised with what people ask. Um, or what people are interested in. I mean, today we're going to talk about backyard chickens again. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, we've talked about that two or three times. So we're going to talk about backyard chickens again. Um, is it Love something it. I never saw myself talking about? No, because we talked about it before. So I sort of knew it was going to come up again. Um, but you know, to be honest, no, I'm not surprised by anything that anybody comes up with. Awesome. And maybe that's just because I get around. Nobody surprises me with a question anymore. Okay, <laughs> counselor, I'm going to move to our last segment here. And this is my favorite segment. Well, second favorite segment because I like policy talk. And it's tourism, 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 tourism. Um, with a large following of listeners in central Canada, across Canada, in Europe, in Britain, in Ireland, for some reason. Hello, Ireland. Um, what are some of the hidden gems that the, a tourist coming to your community should be seeing, should be going to visit, should be going to take in? Uh, you know, we really, we're a great community. We've got, you know, start out when you come, we've got great accommodations. We've got great restaurants. We've got great retail space. Our downtown core is lively and active. Lots of unique shops and different experiences. When you move out from there, I mean, Lethbridge itself has uh, more than 130 different parks. Uh, we've got, I think it's 240 kilometers of walking trails and playground sports field throughout the city. We've got a ton of amazing green space. We've got the river valley running right through us. Um, fingers crossed, we can get some recreational activity going on on the water a little bit more. That's sort of something I'd love to see. Um, but we've got biking in the river valley, hiking in the river valley, that kind of thing. We've got a ton of really great stuff here. Um, we've got some market ready products as far as tourism goes. So we definitely have Mickey Yuko Japanese Garden. Um, and we've also got Fort Wupa. So we've got those tourist sites. But then when you sort of look at, um, look at our area and you certainly, if you're able to, when you base yourself here in Lethbridge, um, you can kind of spoke out to different areas. So we're close to Waterton, um, we're close to uh, Head Smash and Buffalo Jump and Riding on Stone, um, Dinosaur Provincial Park you can still drive to and back in the day. So we've got lots of great spoke activities too, right? And you can definitely make and easily make Lethbridge your central hub, stay here, dine here, shop here. And if you decide you want to take out some day trips, um, that's great. You can do that too, right? So we are a really great central location for Southern Alberta. And we've got a lot of great amenities going on here, as well as, you know, tons of different festivals going on throughout the year. Um, Dragon Boat Festival, Whoop Up Days, um, our word on the street, uh, Street Wheelers, Southern Alberta Ethnic Association does a number of really great events uh, throughout the year. You know, where else can you dine in a water tower, right? Because we've, we've remodeled that. Um, you know, there's just so many great things. We have a solar system model, and that's a really cool thing too, that you can, 
drive to, travel to, but you can also walk and bike to, right? So yeah, it's it's a it's a scale down system of the the solar system, and you wow. get to visit different wow. places throughout the community. Jupiter is hosted over at the University of Lethbridge, so you get to check out that. Uh, so yeah, there's just a lot of really cool, great things to check out right here in the city. Um, and then we are supported by our surrounding region as well. For you though, after a very long stressful day at council, after a hard day, just you need to go away and decompress. Where's the one place that you can get away to in the city that you can just go and relax and just decompress? Is there a park? Is there a walking trail? Is there a little restaurant? Is there just a safe space for you to go to? I mean, other than my backyard, uh, which <laughs> is pretty freaking amazing. Um, and, you know, there's a restaurant bar back there, too. Um, <laughs> but uh, Henderson Lake, you will always find me around Henderson Lake. And I think everybody who knows me knows I am going to be walking around Henderson Lake sometime during the day. And that's part of my five kilometer route, eight kilometer route that I do every day. So, well, you yeah. heard it here first, people. If you want to go talk to Councillor Rem uh, Schmidt Rempel, go to Henderson Lake tomorrow. She'll be there probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, except I'll have my headphones in and I'll be ignoring <laughs> you. And it'll just keep going. I'll wave. Done. <laughs> so let's end on the million dollar question. And that million dollar question is this What makes the city of Lethbridge such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? You know, there are so many things, right? I can get anywhere I want in the city within 10 minutes, even during rush hour traffic. So there's that that's just huge, right? You can get anywhere you need. Uh, we're a mid-sized city. We have all the amenities of a large city. Uh, affordable housing crisis, which, which is fantastic. We've got lots of green space, lots of recreational areas. We've got lots of festivals going on throughout the year. There's a ton of stuff that goes on around here. We have fantastic caring people in our community who care about this city, who are connected to this city and who want to see the best for this city. So you will find yourself in a community here and you will find yourself very quickly adopted into the community here. Um, so like I said, we're a mid-sized city and we're certainly growing, but that strong sense of community carries through everything that goes on in this city. Councillor Jen, I want to thank you so much for doing this. I'm just cautious of the time here, and I know you probably have a lunch to get to or a meeting to get to. So thank you so much for sitting down with me for the last 40, 50 minutes almost and talking about yourself and your community. It was an honor and a pleasure, and I got more out of this than you could probably ever imagine. So thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It was great, and thanks for reaching out and giving me the opportunity to do this. Awesome. So with that, this has been another edition of the Cross Border Interviews Municipal Month. As I said during the interview, we are sitting down with Coldale Mayor Jack Van Ryan tomorrow. So please tune in for another great episode. And remember, put down Twitter, put down Instagram, put down Facebook for at least 10 minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society. It helps our democracy. And at the end of the day, it makes us a better people. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking. <laughs>